Graham is not afraid of the big, grand gesture. He has become, through hard work and talent, one of the most sought after opera directors in the world. Graham is passionate about opera. He believes that it shows us ourselves, that it shows us something about our lives, uh, that it matters, that we can't do without it. Over a 30-year career, Graham Vick has built a reputation as one of the opera world's most imaginative stage directors. And his productions for Glyndebourne, La Scala Milan and the New York Met have acquired classic status. The sprawling industrial city of Birmingham is one of the most socially and culturally diverse communities in the country. When Vic took the massive step of forming a company to translate his ideas into reality, it was here that he found the enthusiasm, the people and the locations he needed. Our journey begins in Birmingham with a radical new production of Verdi's Othello, staged by Graham Vick's Birmingham Opera Company. Hailed by critics as one of the hits of the season, everything about it was unexpected. The first and maybe most important thing is that the audience arrives at an inner city industrial space. It's an enormous, slightly dilapidated, disused factory that has no associations with theatre. It's nothing to do with the Temple of Art. What we're working towards is constructing a four minute scene that goes from beginning drinking to the fight. Um, in between those two places, there's four minutes to slowly get uglier. Graham calls it a laboratory. We come in and Graham obviously has an idea in his head, but the actual performance comes from individuals. It's not like learning a play. We actually develop the whole storyline with Graham. Here. Yeah. You feel you can say and do things, and no one judging you. Scattered across the city, there are half a dozen different dance groups who've been working separately to create material to be used in the rarely performed ballet section of Verdi's opera. Yeah! I can't dance. <laughs> I believe I'm tone deaf, and I just have no rhythm. We came here, and we found out that we can, actually. There's more to it than what you see on TV. It's quite cool. I mean, some of these people are coming to us, they're 18 years old, they're 20 year olds, they're mothers, they're fathers, they've not had any real contact with theatre, let alone opera, um, and they have great life experience, which we want to look at. The fingers, just tiptoe across your chest. But let go of the claw, not until she gets there. Soft. If you've never been to opera before, you only see what? people want you to see, like you see on TV and in papers and that kind of stuff, but being inside it gives you a totally different view. Well, you all learn this, so we repeat it as a, an idea, yeah? Ba, ba, seven, eight, one, two. It's always a two-way process. We get an enormous amount from them, but we try very hard to make sure we give them as much as we possibly can to take away. Here we go. I see and hear it through their eyes when I'm working on it. Knowing that maybe 60% of the audience will never have seen an opera is liberating and challenging. Um, but the responsibility is to make it alive and fresh and speak first time round. Fantastic, well done. There are eight professional soloists in the Othello cast, but Vic chooses to blur the distinction between them and his amateur actors rehearsing them both side by side to bring a scene like this drinking song vividly to life. The corn is brave and true, drink hard, drink deeply. When you stand right next to an opera singer and they start singing, you know, belting out a tune, you just think, where on earth has that come from? Because opera singers, not only can they sing, but they can also act. 
that was from the clouds away from hearts of man. After two short months of workshops and rehearsals, alongside a team of professional singers and with a full orchestra, they'll present seven performances of a world-class English language version of Otello, one of Verdi's most intense and powerful operas. What we're doing is telling a story with the richest possible resonance, so that the broadest possible number of people can find a point of contact with a great work of art. Give him another and he'll be drunk. Give him another then he'll be drunk. In the warehouse the performers occupy the same space as the audience and the action unfolds all around them. In this scene Iago gets his rival Cassio drunk in order to humiliate him publicly. Now that he's drunk, we'll ruin him. Approach him, provoke him to quarrel. Make him angry, he'll pick a fight, then there'll be a riot. That is your way to sabotage a fellow as he is enjoying his first night of love. I am going to do it. Now, every night, it's the same. His drinking's become a problem. Othello must know it. Let's go to guard the rampart. Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 Who's laughing? Look at the drunkard! What? What you are saying? You have started a loud and the drunkard! You bastard! For that, I will kill you! Control your behavior, sir, I command you. A bit out to break if you dare to... Rodrigo, as fast as you can, run shouting and yelling, a ride, a ride, go spread it all over the town, get the watchman to sound the alarm, my comrades, this fighting's ridiculous, stop it, what already my father is wounded. 